They've collected almost 800 bags of trash and logged 2,000 volunteer hours. And of course, they say they're not quitting anytime soon. And we appreciate it. Thanks to the camera system around the West Transfer Point and on the buses, police were able to see and hear footage of the entire assault. Think two wheels is hard? Try riding on just one. The experts say the first step is to talk with a realtor that you trust. Hung Tao drills through the two feet of ice and then scoops out water to mix with the snow. Ashtrays are now a thing of the past in Wisconsin bars, but one in five Americans still can't kick the habit. And if you don't clean off your boat, the DNR says you can be cited more than $230. Each one of these markers here represents a soldier's life lost during the Iraq or Afghanistan war, making up an entire mile long memorial of 6,000 tombstones. Make way for the bikes. They can't run me over today. Cars are taking a back seat this weekend as cyclists like Emily Mills take the wheel for Madison's Ride the Drive. The roads are really smooth and fantastic to ride on, and it's just, it's really cool to see this many people out here riding without having to worry about watching your back. Major roads downtown, including part of the Capitol Square, East Wash, and John Nolan shut down Sunday, creating quite the detour. Signs like this one here don't just affect traffic on the streets. They also stop traffic from coming in and out of businesses. Mayor Paul Soglin is concerned area restaurants and retailers are losing customers because of the event, something he says they can't afford. You know, in this economy, every day of the year is important. Especially warm summer days which for Shatara Restaurant on State Street can be the best time for business. It's just a very slow day, but it shouldn't be a slow day. You know, a beautiful Sunday afternoon shouldn't be a slow day for us. That's why Soglin is proposing an alternative route. We've got to do something on State near Johnson and Gorham, and we probably ought to do something in this whole East Washington, Willie Street area. A minor shift in gears that he says could save the drive. But for some participants, they're skeptical the revised plans will actually move forward. I think there should be a compromise, and to me that doesn't sound like a compromise. To me that shows like he's more concerned with a, a business revenue than with a community revenue. For now, the decision is up in the air, but the mayor says he isn't putting the brakes on this fall's Ride the Drive just yet. In downtown Madison, Madeline Anderson, WISC News 3. When you think of the lakes in Madison, what comes to mind? Tons of plastic. There's tons of plastic. Lots of uh, lots of beer cans. A trash dump. <laughs> For these Monona Bay residents, garbage tops the list. I was shocked at how much trash there was. I was so shocked. While participating in the city's annual Stake in the Lakes six years ago, Nina Emerson realized her backyard bay was more of a community dumpster than a pristine waterway. And it just really brings home the point of, you know, really being careful about our use. That's why Nina formed Friends of Monona Bay. It's a group that's out every month getting their hands dirty to keep their lake clean. You see a whole bunch of somebody's fishing gear tangled up. We're really stewards of the park and the shoreline. And they have to be. Monona Bay is the depositor of storm sewers for downtown Madison. If somebody litters up by the Capitol and then there's a big rainstorm, it's going to end up down here. It really makes me wonder. I mean, like, I don't go to these people's houses and throw crap in their front yard or backyard. Um, uh, why do people do this? It's a question that can be difficult to answer, but the solution is simple. Leave the area where you're in just a teeny bit cleaner than where, when, when you showed up and, and it'd be a lot nicer. A little effort that's already paid off. When volunteers first started, you could hardly go any distance at all without filling up your bags and running out of time. Now we're, you know, it goes a lot more quickly. We're still picking up an awful lot of trash, but the volume isn't what it used to be. And for what it will be, the Bay residents hope new words come to mind. Clean Bay and a clean, uh, clean neighborhood, a clean park. Uh, that's the payoff. And the group told me since 2006, they've collected almost 800 bags of trash and logged 2,000 volunteer hours. And of course, they say they're not quitting anytime soon. And we appreciate it. Thanks, Madeline. James Russell and his three children lost mom to brain cancer last year, right before Father's Day. A year later, they're spending the holiday the only way they know how, together. She always loved our pictures that we made in school. Memories of her three children that Pat Russell hung proudly throughout the house. Now they're the ones sharing memories of mom. Napkin started on fire and my dad got really mad and he said, 
Mom, what are you doing that for? And she goes, I didn't mean to. But you know, if you didn't have me in my, your life, it wouldn't be fun. And you wouldn't have any fun in your life. Not having Pat in his life seemed unimaginable for James Russell. But just one year ago, on Mother's Day... Things happened so fast that, you know, it was just one thing after another. Pat was diagnosed with brain cancer. And weeks later, right before Father's Day... She just lost the will. Um, she said, I'm going home. She said, uh, my work is done here. And Now, the family is coping as best they can with the worst situation. I mean, some nights I lay awake waiting for her to come into my room. I think it's just much harder. And some of my friends don't realize how hard it is. Now you had everybody tearing up. But between the tears, James and his kids have created new memories to display in their lives. Father's Day, I made Dad a hat. It says gray matters because that's what they call your brain tissue. And I guess, I mean, that's what they, the kind of saying for brain cancer is. And one more sign of love to show Dad just how proud they are. I made that in an art class. Thank you. Fire up the grill, because it's Bratfest! Add an S to that, because Bratfest is plural, with not one, not two, but three. Worst times, it's kind of an alternative to the Bratfest. Worst times organizer Rodney Kenoki says he's protesting Johnsonville Brats because the company contributed money to the Walker campaign. The underlying reason for the event is political, but uh, the event itself is basically just a uh, Bunch of people having a good time. A good time, and this time, at their venue of choice. I think there's room enough for everyone to have their event. Johnsonville can have their event, I can have mine. Uh, People's Broadfest is going on at the Capitol right now. And it looks like the people have spoken. I need six on white. Well, their stomachs have at least. But Bill Fetty, an organizer of the People's Broadfest at the Farmer's Market, says the real meat of the event isn't what's between the bun. It's where it comes from. How much more local does it get than your own farms and farmers bringing their goods to the market? Although the market at the original Broadfest may not be homegrown, organizer Tim Metcalf says all the proceeds stay in Dane County. It's always been about giving back and celebrating our, our heritage as you know, Wisconsinites and uh, raising money for charities. And as most Wisconsinites will tell you, the only right way to experience Battle of the Brats is to try them for yourself. Politics aside, a brat is a brat is a brat. And when you got a brat, you really can't go wrong. In downtown Madison, Madeline Anderson, WISC News 3.